Greetings once again from the Kenyan teacher. It is our pleasure to present extraction of copper metal. We begin with the ores of copper. Chief ore is copper pyrites or chalcopyrites which is simply copper iron disulfide. Other ores include malachite which is basic copper carbonate. We also have chalcosite or copper glands which is copper one sulfide. The other ore is atacamine, which is basic copper chloride. Lanas, we now proceed on to the extraction process. The extraction process of copper metal is divided into three main stages or steps. Step 1 involves concentration of the ore where we remove much of the unwanted materials present in the ore. Step 2 involves roasting followed by reduction of the ore and we finally have refining of the ore or purification of the same. Let us now go through each step one by one as we explain what goes on at each, beginning with concentration of the ore. So step one involves concentration of the ore and as we have said, we try to remove much of the unwanted materials which may be present in our ore. So here, the method used is froth flotation. And as we had mentioned earlier, froth flotation is used to concentrate mainly sulfide ores. Our main ore being one of them. So what happens here is that the finely divided ore is mixed with oil and stirred with soapy water in a large tank as shown in the diagram here. Now, compressed air is then blown through the mixture. Of course, the mixture here has water, the mixture has oil, the mixture has ore and some detergent. So what happens is that the oil-coated particles of the ore will float on top of the tank where they form a froth which can then be skimmed off into the next container on our far right. Now most of the rocky material including silicon 4 oxide will settle at the bottom of the tank and is also periodically removed from the left hand side. That does it for concentration of the ore as our stage one in extraction of copper. We now move to stage two where we do roasting and finally reduction of the ore. So in step two, our ore is roasted in air, of course in a furnace, where we shall form three substances. The ore will form copper one sulfide, ion two oxide, 
and sulfur 4 oxide during the roasting. This can be represented in an equation as follows. Our O copper ion disulfide which is a solid will react with oxygen in the air during roasting to give us copper 1 sulfide we shall get ion 2 oxide and we also get sulfur 4 oxide of course the equation is balanced with a 2 on our O a 4 on oxygen a 2 on ion 2 oxide and a 3 on sulfur 4 oxide now the next step is to find a way of separating the two solids here which we are going to look at in a moment in the meantime let us see how we treat our gas which of course is poisonous and we don't want to actually release it to the atmosphere so some questions usually ask about associated industries that can be found near where copper is being mined and this is where our gas comes in so we are saying that the sulfur 4 oxide here is not allowed to escape to the atmosphere but we recover it and we can use it in the contact process manufacturing plant to produce sulfuric 6 acid so if we are asked of a possible plant or a possible industry that can be established near copper mines someone should think of the contact processing plant that sorts out the issue of sulfur 4 oxide gas so in our next step we will have to find a way of separating copper 1 sulfide from iron 2 oxide so to do so we introduce silica or silicon 4 oxide what silica does is that it will react with ion 2 oxide to form ion 2 silicate as slag the only substance that will remain here now is copper 1 sulfide which we are saying is going to melt and fall to the bottom of the furnace from where we can tap it off periodically now when silica reacts with ion 2 oxide to form ion 2 silicate we have an equation for the same which will be silicon 4 oxide which is a solid reacting with ion 2 oxide another solid to form ion 2 silicate let us see how now this ion 2 silicate is removed out of the furnace so the slug will float over our dense molten copper 1 sulfide and we continually tap it off from the furnace at the same time molten copper one sulfide is also periodically tapped off through a separate outlet at the bottom of the furnace so what do we do to our copper one sulfide after being tapped off now the solid form of it is then heated in a converter of course with controlled supply of air during this controlled supply of air to our copper one sulfide part of it is going to react with oxygen in air and we form copper one oxide together with a little bit more of sulfur 4 oxide 
This equation is balanced with a 2 on copper 1 sulfide, a 3 on oxygen, a 2 on copper 1 oxide, and a 2 on sulfur 4 oxide. Once we have our copper 1 oxide here, now the remaining part of copper 1 sulfide will now be used to reduce it to copper. Let's have a look at how that happens next. The remaining copper 1 sulfide will then react with copper 1 oxide to form molten copper and more sulfur 4 oxide gas. The equation for that reaction will be as follows. Copper 1 oxide reacting with copper 1 sulfide, the bit that was not reacted during the previous process. So this would give us copper, of course, in a molten state, and a little more of sulfur 4 oxide gas. We shall balance our equation with a 2 on the copper 1 oxide, a 6 on copper metal. Now this copper that is obtained here is usually called blister copper. Why blister copper? It is called blister copper because as it solidifies bubbles of sulfur 4 oxide are released which gives it a blistered appearance. Now to the last step and that is refining or purification of copper. So we are saying that the blister copper obtained from reduction of copper 1 oxide is only just about 95 to 97% pure. This copper can only be used in making boilers or pipes. So if we need copper to be used for making electrical wires, then we have to refine or purify the blister copper. This is done through electrolysis. Our electrolyte is a solution of copper 2 sulfate with some sulfuric acid added. This is to improve on conductivity of our solution. Now, the anode is where we shall put our blister copper, the impure copper. Here, oxidation will take place where the impure copper in solid state will be converted into ions. And this process is accompanied by loss of two moles of electrons. So as the ions are formed here, our impure copper is going to dissolve and go into solution as copper ions. This leaves behind the impurities, which we have here as sludge. We can also call them gauge, or a candidate can just use the word impurities. Now, our cathode is made of a thin strip of pure copper. But here, we shall have deposition of pure copper happening. So our cathode will keep on becoming bigger and bigger and bigger as the process continues. The equation at cathode, therefore, would be reduction of copper ions through gain of two moles of electrons to form pure copper metal. That is how we do the refining. Now, the sludge here usually contains some precious metals as well, including gold, silver, or even platinum. These precious metals are usually purified from the sludge at some point during extraction of copper. Dear candidate, with that, we've come to the end of this video where we've taken you through 
the extraction processes involved in production of copper metal. Thanks for your time and we want to take this opportunity to wish you all the best in your revision.